Hi, it's Ian from the Postal Hub Podcast. And Marek from Last Mile Experts. And we are The Last Mile Profits. This is the last word on The Last Mile. Marek, you like a bit of technology, don't you? Oh, I do. You like a bit of last mile delivery technology. Singapore Post is trialling a smart mailbox or smart letterbox, which will basically be like a residential parcel locker, but one that handles letters as well. Now, I know I've really oversimplified that, but it's a trial that they're doing there in Singapore. And I'd say stimulated by a couple of things. One being there was the classic growth in parcels, falling letters. So how do you maintain a letter delivery service and a parcel delivery service without doubling up on everything? And of course, Singapore right at the moment dealing with quite an increase in parcel volumes. I think that the figure I read was a 50% increase for May compared to May last year. And we know what's fueling that, so we're not going to go into that. But it's a nice bit of technology, and they're trialling it, Mark, these smart letterboxes in a number of locations in Singapore. And I have a feeling you've got a hot take on it. Yeah, I surprise, surprise, I do. I mean, first, first of all, I do like technology, and I think technology, particularly in the locker space, is in fad now and it's really needed. The only question I've got is the complexity of a machine that can sort both letters and small parcels because this particular machine, from what I understand, it's not going to be suitable for larger parcels. You know, is that the place to go given the fact that letter volumes, and it's not just in Singapore, the whole world round are declining. So if if, if it carries on the way it is now, I wouldn't be surprised if in 10 years time, you know, a letter is something that you see in a museum and you go and show your kids, hey, this, this was a letter because it's all going to be email, electronic messaging, etc. Now, on that basis, this, this kid is expensive. I know you're a, you're a, you're an ex- Oh, no, I'm going to let you finish. Guy, so you, I'm going to let you finish. And, and <laughs> me on this, but that's my thinking. All right. Well, that's, um, Maddox, you've, you've. Oh, no, he's been... lost the words. What has no, happened? This no, sticker has lost the words. You've, uh, you've spent your life in the private sector and you don't know the joys of politicians and governments taking a very strong interest in what you do. <laughs> so as long as governments say that, posts are obliged to deliver letters, they will continue to have to find ways to reduce their costs in delivery. Now, it's this reducing costs in delivery of letters is critical because of the falling letter volumes and that the cost per item is effectively increasing. You've got increasing numbers of delivery points. Your overheads continue to increase as wages increase. And I'm not saying that wages shouldn't increase. Don't, please don't anybody hammer me on that one. But the idea is, how can we make this more efficient? And I think that one of the things that we've missed in our little conversation here about tech is that this is also linked into an app and notifications and things like that. So mail, I don't oh, think is IDM. going... IDM. IDM. Well, you know, a form of IDM. Now, th- those of you who follow the Postal Hub podcast will know that I've discussed this thing called informed delivery a number of times over the last few years, which is programming for the US Postal Service, which is trying to bring a bit of that IDM experience and more to letters. So in other words, making letters not just a physical piece, but an interactive digital piece. Is that going to save letter volumes? No, it's not going to save letter volumes because so much of what people have been receiving in the, in the mail is just dull and and boring and the value in receiving a bank statement for example in the mail is just not there for a lot of people for some people it is but for a lot of people there's no value in receiving a bank statement in the mail i mean how many bank statements do you receive in the mail i'm waging Uh, it's probably close to zero whereas if you went back 10 or 15 years you were probably receiving five statements a month from various institutions there might have been a business account a personal account a credit card account you know your joint account and all of that anyway where i'm getting to here is that yeah it probably is too much tech for letters in some respect but i'm willing to give it a go because it is just a trial and posts Mark, posts love to run trials. They love it. It's like, you know, it's like a drug for them. We'll run a trial. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But I think that the more exciting part of it probably will be the parcels. Letters, you mentioned the fall of letter volumes. Let's say they don't disappear completely, but in five or ten years' time, letters might only be delivered every second day in a lot more markets than they currently are, or they might be delivered twice a week. And you look at what's happening in Denmark is the classic example where Denmark letters, regular letters are delivered once a week, 
Express items are delivered more frequently. Ian, but, Ian, but I think that is exactly it. If you remember what our friends in Norway are doing, where it's now two day, and, and the reality is, if you think about letters, no one really tracks when they arrive because it's not like a courier parcel where you know where it's coming. Oh, and that's so that's especially with the probably, value of mail, though, Mark. This is this is the one of the points I'm getting to here. Is that the, the value of mail has been it's been a mass market. What do you call it, a commoditized product? Mm -hmm. So all people really have been interested in is price. Whereas more and more posts are starting to introduce just regular tracked letters, because actually that's starting to be what people want out of their letter. Now, if you if I send you a postcard to say. Here I am on the beach at, I don't know. Where do people can people still go to the beach? <laughs> well, at the moment, in Moss, I gather. <laughs> but there's whereas if you're starting to send letters that have a value in it, then they might need to be tracked. I I, I feel like I've gone off on a huge tangent here. But, but, but Ian, but let, let let me finish the point then, because I I reckon that that with two day mail. From what our friend Gunnar at um, Norway Post shared with us, people didn't really notice the difference at all. No, no, and I'm not getting any an argument over the frequency of delivery. And I think there still will be a frequency of delivery, whether it's once a week, twice a week, every second day, whatever it might be. The question is about how we value the mail as well. I know we've come a long way. But, but, talk but that, about... that Mr. Kerr, is a real tangent. We, we can come back that, to that yeah. in another one. For, for, when we're talking about the machine, I think that the key point would be isn't it better to invest in two-day, maybe some other version of non-everyday delivery for non-core items? Because parcels are different. Oh, yeah. Maybe yeah. use something that in our other video cast, we talked about this company, what was it called? Park and... Park and Parcel, which is the Singapore Park company and Parcel, that has where the got delivery to a neighbour. You've got crowdsourced people that theoretically you could deliver well, less. Well, mate, you, uh, Mark, you can actually go the next step and try what Canada Post tried, which was where they delivered to these cluster boxes, where instead of having to go to everybody's address to deliver individual letters, they delivered to a cluster box. And they had been doing that for years. Then it became political. I want to come back, though, to something we haven't quite discussed. Yet. We've only got a couple of minutes left, but something that you would absolutely love. Um, this is where it comes to if an item cannot fit in a letterbox, the postman then has to deliver it to the door. And we're talking about Singapore, lots of high-rise apartments. In I'm quoting directly from the article here. In high-rise Singapore, that delivery takes an average of six minutes versus six seconds for a letter delivery. So straight away, <coughs> that's a big saving in time and labor and makes delivery much more efficient, right? Absolutely. And, and for, from my perspective, there is no question that there needs to be a better solution. And I don't like to door. It's not ecologically efficient. It's not operationally efficient. But if it's and to the building? If it's close by, to, to be honest, th this is the one I'd be a little bit careful with, because frankly, from my perspective, if I've got to go 20 or 50 meters to a convenient locker that can do everything for me in terms of my parcel needs, frankly, it's not a big deal. Today, on my estate, I live in a closed estate where the entry gate is about 50 metres from where I am. And I basically say, all my letters, everything, let's have it there because it's easy, safe and controlled. And I don't think people, provided it's close enough, I agree that if you start getting to a situation where people are walking half a mile, it becomes a problem. It becomes a problem if the thing is not covered and when it's raining, um, you have to get to it. Yeah. But I think there are ways to, to develop an infrastructure which is ultra-local, which isn't at your doorstep, but it's so close that it's you know almost the same. Well, I know that there are other postal operators who are having a good hard look at something not exactly like this, but similar sorts of ideas where there might be some sort of a residential parcel locker that can handle those small parcel deliveries and might even be a collection point for things like e-commerce returns and all of that. Who knows where we're going to land with all of this, whether it's going to be a high-tech option with lots and lots of technology and all the bells and whistles or something low-tech like a basic Dropbox I mean, we, and we, we could even talk about what Unpost has done with its delivery box. But, Mark, we've run out of time. And I've spent all that time talking about letters just for a change. But, I can talk so much more no, about letters, so everybody. First time we've done a real letter and mail, BC. Oh, comment below if you want more of me talking about letters. I don't think people will. <laughs> Mark Krzyzewski, thanks for being part of The Last Mile Profits today. Thank you, and Thank you, everyone.